Hello, hi, welcome. Welcome to Keysta Art Studio. I was editing this painting for you all and I was trying to see what I could talk about while I explore the new medium and a new style of art. Last week we discussed the history of gouache, why I swatched these acrylic Liquitex paints. I felt like today maybe I wanted to try another type of style instead of the more realism kind of paintings and drawings I do. But lately, I have been influenced by an illustrative cartoon art, kind of like the anime of Studio Ghibli. And the gouache being the perfect medium to work in that style, I am going to be sketching out here the idea of doing a landscape in this more animated style. If you want to uh, paint with me, that would be great. I'm using the art planner I designed to uh, sketch out my ideas and think about what I'm going to do, but a simple sheet of paper would work just plainly to sketch out your ideas or plan your piece. I figured while we uh, work in a new this new medium to me and a different type of style than I typically work in, I would talk about the concept of an artist style. But I think we need to clarify what an art style is versus an artist style. It's a subtle difference, but I think it's important to distinguish when you are thinking about what your own art style is or artist style is. A simple Google search shows that an art style is determined by the characteristics that describe the artwork in which the artist employs, you know, form, color, composition, you know, all the technical jargon that makes these pieces, all the pieces of art we make, all of the ideas of ourselves on paper or ceramics or whatever it is that you do. But so how does this differ from an artist style, an art style versus an artist style? Does not an artist style compose all of these same things, the composition you work in, the colors, the subject matter? Well, if we go back to Google, because, you know, that is what we do in this technology focused day and age where Google is our go to, you know, Google defines an artist style as the manner in which the artist portrays their subject matter and how the artist expresses his or her vision. Now, this is just in visual arts, but it can be applied to all the seven types of artist forms, like architecture, literature, music, all the different types of artist forms. So has this confused anyone? It sounds like textbook mumble jumble to me, to be honest. So let's break it down just a little bit more. In one of my vlogs at the beginning of the year, I mentioned something like how much I hate the concept of artist style, how it became so limited in the exploration of art, yourself, your surroundings. But here's the thing, the more I research about the artist style, the more I realize that is exactly what the artist style is, a collaboration of your vision, experiences, and what you uh, want to portray in your art and what you want to say to the world. Right here, I'm just trying to decide how I want this piece to go and what kind of dragon, if I want it smaller, bigger, or anything. But we're going to get right into the paints here, the acrylic gouache paint again. I've never really worked in gouache, acrylic gouache, this type of medium. And in my mind, defining my art style meant I wouldn't be able to have the opportunity to, you know, really explore all these other concepts or types of mediums or anything like that. However, I realized the more I took a deeper dive into the history of art style in itself and the concept of an artist style, I got more comfortable with the idea that having an art style, an artist style, isn't actually going to hinder what it is that makes me and my art say what I want it to say. This paper, by the way, holds up really well. It's not like, it's not watercolor paper, but it doesn't show um, that paint too much through. So that was kind of nice and it, that I found out, by the way, with this little notebook I designed and created for KDP. So going back into the research I did, I was wondering to myself, what if it was just a grouping of a body of work? doesn't have to be your entire life's body of work, but the ability to see the artist in the pieces of what you are doing at that time, to have your vision translated through your body of art, no matter the subject matter composition or the medium in which you are working on. And what I found out while I was doing some research, I found out that there are more than 70 five types of art styles in visual art and I'm referring to the period of art 
not individual artist styles. In history, the centuries have produced many different types of art styles from the beginning of time with prehistoric art when man painted handprints and the depictions of animals on, you know, the cave walls with just the pigment in a natural binder like spit to the current age of the expansiveness of digital art that we can be in the forms of a painting or even a motion picture like a cartoon. Not all art styles have their own defined century, you know, like it's just this is what happened during this period of time, but a lot of the art styles translated into the artist's own work during that time period. Even during the Renaissance art time of the 1400s to like the 1600s, where artists moved from medieval period to a more individualism or style of style, there was many other styles of art included during this time period, like the High Renaissance and Mannerism. The style of High Renaissance art depicted many new ne techniques of foreshadowing, sfumato, and chiaroscuro. In addition, during this era, a reaction to the style was the new style called mannerism, which produced art that had like a harmony of proportions, balance, the ideal body. And although the subject matter was, you know, tend to lean towards religious subject matter, the, the, these, all these new techniques created a new art style of the time period. But why even bother with talking about art styles when we want to, you know, develop our own individual artist style? What's the big deal about all of these different time periods and all the different art styles? Why does it matter when you're only trying to create your own individual art style? Who cares, right? But like one of the most famous artists of the Renaissance era, Leonardo da Vinci, developed over many years of practice and study a distinctive art style. Even when he was studying under the tutelage of Verrocchio, when historians stuttered, stuttered, <laughs> that's what I'm doing. When uh, they studied the Annunciation under an x-ray, they were able to distinguish between the two artists the difference of Verrocchio's heavier brush strokes compared to the light watered base paint strokes of Leonardo, his apprentice. It was typical in the Renaissance era for students to master the art of drawing before they even picked up a paintbrush, which, you know, is actually kind of a good study to think about. As for me, myself, I really enjoy drawing, and I think that actually improved a lot of my own art. But when da Vinci began to paint, he would create an underpainting detailed in neutral grays and browns, and then he would build up layers of transparent glazes on top. His depth of his paintings came from these different layers of translucent glazes, producing more of a luminous tones, even when he worked in a palette of muted earthy browns and greens and blues, and never in a bright red. His mastery in Carrascuro, the effect of light and dark, gave his paintings an individual style. His da Vinci style was influenced by all these new techniques of the Renaissance era, along with the other artists of the same era like Donatello or Botticelli, you know, Michelangelo, all of these artist styles are highly influenced by the art style of the time. And I think that comes in full circle as to here I am painting more of a Studio Ghibli kind of landscape and maybe not perfect because realistically I I'm just doing what feels right at the time of painting it. But I'm giving myself the opportunity to explore a type of art style that I typically wouldn't paint in. And it, uh, it was a lot of fun, don't get me wrong, I loved it. And I really think that we should give ourselves the opportunity, even when we're trying to define our artist style, the advantage of having all of this different types of influences on our own personal self, on our own personal mission and what we think we want to tell the world in our art. And it's interesting how even just a type of paint can influence our artist style. Like here I'm working with a medium that I'm not used to. I'm working with gouache and it is a really nice happy medium between that watercolor I'm 
I normally work in or acrylic and I'm getting the opportunity to do what I always wanted to do with acrylic and watercolor that I couldn't do before. Um, during the golden age of like Japanese art prints, a German chemist accidentally discovered a new type of pigment, a new type of paint color, Prussian blue. And this influenced the type of styles during that time period. The pigment highly influenced the Japanese art, especially the artist Hokusai. Early blues in Japanese art were more unstable and unreliable, but this new pigment, this Prussian blue that was imported through a Dutch trading post in Dushima, Hokusai was devoted to this paint color, which you can see in many of his paintings of Mount Fuji. His style was decorative, elegant, sometimes with a dramatic vignette. And even in his The Great Wave, which I think if you see it, you kind of just recognize it. It has beautiful blues and it's got a couple of different boats that you almost don't see in the waves. And at first, you know, you you see the sea of blue and the dazzling of the fallen snow under the crashing waves and it's just it's really nice and to think that just a simple paint color accidentally discovered by a German chemist could actually influence an artist's style you know and I just I feel like when it comes to style we are influenced by these things by the technique the medium the our own personal experiences. Oh, coffee was going to spill there. <laughs> and uh, by that, you're just creating your own voice. You know, what you want to say to the world by creating your own style. Even during, like, the era of Romanticism, there was actually no set style or a manifesto uh, that encompassed, it, it just had, it encompassed a very broad array of painters that worked in the kind of romanticism quote-unquote style but their work was so different for that art style because it was influenced by them themselves the artist from Turner's works in the 1800s in romanticism working straight on canvas without any sketches any cartoon studies nothing he was a master of transitions of the tones in the sky by using thin transparent washes and delicate stripping and then you've got John Martin in the same romanticism era who was influenced by the sublime a concept by a philosopher Edmund Burke in the 1800s to look at a piece of art and it makes you move you body and soul it just creates a dramatic effect on you martin placed figures in melodramatic landscapes and his palette reflecting the power of mystery awe terror that kind of thing from turner who used luminescent scenes and he was always like if you they say that if you looked at his uh paint box it would confirm how adventurous he was in his spirit of new pigments and he would get them as soon as they come available, <laughs> which I think that, you know, reflects some of us where we always constantly buy new products just to try them out, just to change uh, what we do, you know, and to change our style a little bit or improve our style or work towards our artist style of what we feel is going to express what we want to the world. And realistically, even changing our scenery can change how we have our artist style right so like an impressionism where they plain they were painting plain air you know outdoors the main influence was you know like the vivid juxtaposition of complementing hues and most of these artists that were like artists like Monet, Cezanne, Bertha Morissot they were influenced by this whole painting plain air painting outdoors and the movement was mostly made of like small, thin, visible brush strokes capturing all that light and that movement, the element of the human experience outside. And the scenes were just an impression. Like, <laughs> I know it's so silly, but they were just an impression of what the artist saw, what they painted. The movement itself was basically from a painting. And what I mean by that is Claude Monet painted an impression sunrise that's what it was called you know getting the side he he got a review a very satire review in a parisian newspaper essentially it coining the term for the style impressionism interesting enough this is when the need for collapsible 
metal tubes to make the ease of carrying paint around so they could go outside and paint what they saw were invented and it revolutionized the work. So that was a was another way that was influenced on artist style, right? It influenced the art style of the time period, but it also influenced the artist style because now they could go out, go out plain air and paint. Now there are some artists, kind of like Marth Rothko. Mark Rothko in the 1940s, you, you can very much distinguish his subject matter, you know, his style. It was what they would call tragic and timeless, but large scale rectangular expanses of color from edge to edge of the canvas, very hazy, you know, brush strokes, the blending of pigment in various and subtle ways. You can tell a Rothko is a Rothko, right? And the focus on abstract expressionism during the 1950s created the large-scale fields of color dominated by the time, the contrast, the gestural brush strokes instead of just subject matter. And I know nowadays we are so focused on all this content, from digital content to traditional content, and just, you know, having it all out there, consistently pushing. But sometimes I think that style can be something we try to, you know, more express what we're feeling at the time. And I don't think that our artist style has to be determined specifically by what will define each piece to be. So someone looks at it and goes, hey, that is a Keystar Art Studio painting. But I think we also can learn from these artists over the time and realize that our experiences, our impressions of the world, things like that can give us a more broad ability to define our artist style over the years. Our body of work can be all influenced by the time period we're in or the people we meet or the ideas we come across and we can share that with the world without being so determined that to say this is how I know this is my artist style right well my artist style is me it just simply is me me learning and growing and experiencing the world and sharing my life with the world through my art I hope you all had a good time watching me paint I'll see y'all next time Thanks for hanging out with me, and I hope it took some pressure off the idea that you need to have an artist style by, by realizing that over the years and over the time periods, artist style is just another fancy word for how you want to experience and show and be a part of this world and make it beautiful. And expressing that all in your art. So I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching. Cheers.